Ladies and people who believe in the one. Andy here, I went from depressed and suicidal to living a life of abundance and joy. If I can do it, you sure as hell can too. Let's talk about the difference between soulmates or the one versus the concept of romance. So there was a guy in my coaching program who we had this big discussion, right? And he's sort of struggling to let go of the myth of like the soulmate or the one. He broke up with his girlfriend and they just sort of weren't compatible. And he's been sort of hanging on and feeling like, man, fuck, what if I lost the one? And from a logical point of view, he knows, you know, that's silly. I know there's other people out there. I know there's more fish in the sea. If I built this connection with one person, I can just build it with someone else. But from an emotional point of view, he's really struggling to sort of let go of this idea of like, what if she was the one? And the first thing I'll say for any of you who are sort of feeling the same, you know, maybe you get caught up in these like Disney fairy tale notions, you know, Hollywood loves to push this, these notions of like, there is one soulmate out there for me. There's one special person who's right for me and nobody else will compare. There's just that one beautiful human being who's mine. The reason that you believe that, first of all, because it plays nicely into biology, it, it feels nice and safe, you know, and a big part of what we try and do as we go, up, go through life is we're trying to keep ourselves safe. That's just natural as biological beings that can potentially die and get sick and all of that. Safety is very important to us. The idea of a soulmate or the idea of someone who is the one, you know, you meet this person and you can kind of relax with them. That's very fucking appealing. And so I don't even hold it against Hollywood or any of those places, Disney, where they push this narrative or this idea, and a lot of society pushes this, this idea of like the one or the soulmate, there's the one special person. It also ties very much in with romance. And that's going to be the topic of this podcast is there is a difference between the one or your soulmate versus romance. And the two often get conflated and mixed up and very confused. And romance itself is a beautiful thing romance, intimacy, connection, getting caught up in the emotions, being very present and going with the flow, you know, feeling like you really connect with another human being, sharing, being vulnerable, having beautiful memories together, having amazing sex where you connect. All of that romantic stuff is absolutely fucking wonderful. It's truly, truly beautiful. It's part of the zest of life. It's part of the st- the, 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 the fire that I have inside me every day I wake up. I am so unbelievably romantic with my girlfriend Imogen. Obviously, you won't see it on camera. I'm not going to be romantic on camera in a video. But I have so much romance inside me. I'm an absolute romantic at heart. I'm a diehard fucking romantic. So is she. But what we don't do is conflate that with soulmates or the one. Like you will never hear me or she will never hear me say, you know, you're the one for me, baby girl. You're the only one that I could ever love. You know, you are everything to me. I'm never going to say any of that because it's simply not fucking true. What I have done or what we have done is build a connection. And this is all you ever do when you have these big romantic feelings. You've built a connection with another human being. Keyword there, built. It hasn't just magically happened. It is something that you have built. Even if you're not aware that you have been building it, you have by just spending time with that person, by having nice memories, by having sex, by having romance, that is building. You have built something. By definition, that means you can build that with somebody else. Now, you might grieve if you break up with the person that you're currently with. You might struggle to build something with someone else. You might have to find a bunch of other people before you find someone that you're really connected with, that you can really be compatible with. But you built it. You can build it again. And so there isn't one person that's perfect for you and nobody else could ever compare. No, there's the person who's right in front of you right now that you've chosen to build something with. Or maybe you didn't choose to, you know, you kind of just went along with the flow, but you did build whether or not you're conscious of it or not. And so there's a very big difference between soulmate and romance. Again, I am absolutely all for romance. I am one of the biggest fucking romantics that you will ever meet. I really, really, really am. I just don't go so far as to say this one person that I'm with right now is the only person that I could ever be romantic with. No, that is absolutely fundamentally not true. I could be romantic with other people. I might not want to right away if Imogen and I broke up or if she passed away and died tomorrow. Like, I probably am not going to go and be Mr. Romantic the next day, am I? But I would 
work through my grief. I would process it. I would be grateful for the times we had together. I would eventually be able to move on. I would get on with my life and all of that stuff. And then one day, yes, I would be romantic with someone else. I would build something with someone else. All of the things that I did to build a relationship with her, I would just build that with someone else. And I think a lot of the time, like I said, we get very caught up in these grandiose, beautiful, romantic notions, which are wonderful. But then we go that extra step. We leap off the cliff of sanity and just become fucking crazy delusional. When we say all of this romance that I've built with this one person, I could only ever do it with that one person. It's like, well, now you've just leapt off the cliff and now you're just literally being fucking insane. I was right there with you. I was fully on board with everything you were saying. You know, this is romantic. This is a beautiful relationship. She's a wonderful person. I love it a bit. Oh my God, this is amazing. But the second you say, and I'll never have this again with anyone else, right now we're just entering delusional territory. Because what you're essentially saying there is I can predict the future. No, you can't. Do you know how many people since the dawn of time have said, I will never be with anyone else. Like, I love this person until the end of the earth. Then that person dies or they break up. A couple of years later, they meet the new person and they go, oh shit, no, this is my true soulmate. The other person that I swore up and down was going to be my soulmate or was my soulmate. Nah, like they were just the warm up. This is my soulmate. Then they break up with that person. Oh no, no, no. Down to the next person is my soulmate. I found my true soulmate now. No, you've just lied a bunch of times. You've lied to yourself. You haven't meant to do it. But what you have done with each person is gone all in on romance. You have built something magical, something beautiful, something wonderful. But then you've gone the extra step to insanity by saying, and this is the only person I'll ever do that with. The evidence is right there in front of you, especially by the third or the fourth person you do it with. Holy shit, I can just redo this. I can do this with someone else. And now that doesn't mean what I have built with each individual person isn't special. Of course it is. It just means that I'm not going to step over in that line, step over into delusion and tell myself that this is the only person that I can ever be with. Another thing or another way to think of like soulmate or like the one, you know, getting caught up in that kind of ideology, and it is kind of an ideology, that kind of propaganda, getting caught up in that soulmate shit is you essentially giving away all your power and your agency. Because what you are saying is love is just something that happens to you. You know, it just kind of happens to you. It's lucky. You know, it's, it's two people just magically meet each other and they're perfect for each other. And it's, it's out of our control. And that is very, very, very appealing to a lot of people. It is because in their mind, that makes it more special. A lot of people, when I say build a relationship, build a connection, build romance, a lot of people look at that notion and go, well, that's not very romantic. That, no, that's icky. I want it to just happen. I want it to be magic. You don't want to know how the fucking chip is made, so to speak, as the saying goes. You're just looking for the magic trick, but you don't actually want to peer behind the mirror and see how the magic trick works or behind the curtain and see how the magic trick works. But the way that love comes about is it's something you build, like I said. Even if you're not aware that you're doing it, even if you tell yourself the lie that it just magically happens, no, it happened because you spent a lot of time together and you made a lot of memories. You built something. And so you are taking away your power and your agency when you believe in this soulmate myth or when you believe in the idea of the one. You're taking away any of your fucking power to do it again. And you're basically taking away your power to keep it as well. That's another thing to think about. If you believe in this idea or you get swept up in this idea of a soulmate or the one, how the fuck do you keep that? If, if you didn't do anything to make it happen, as in if it just was kind of dumb luck because two beautiful, perfect souls came together and it was magic, you know, you didn't really have a lot of control over that. How the fuck do you keep it going then, right? If it just happened by pure dumb luck, fuck, what if something goes wrong? What if you start having a moment in your relationship where there's a little bit of friction between you? What if you're starting to argue a little bit more? What if you start losing a little bit of respect for the other person? What if they start losing respect for you? What if one of you gets fat and you're not as attracted to that person anymore? What are you going to do? If you're heavily focused on the soulmate or the one myth, and it is a myth, you have no fucking agency. There's nothing you can do in that moment. You go, oh shit, like love is just this magical ephemeral thing that just happens that I have no fucking control over and she has no control over. It just kind of happened to us. Shit, now it's starting to fade. Ah, oh, fuck, there's nothing we can do to save it. Whereas if you focus on romance or intimacy, you know, building something, if you focus on romance rather than the soulmate idea, romance is an action. It is something that you can do. 
you can do a romantic gesture. You can be intimate with each other. You can spend time together. You can put some time aside in your calendar to build more romance. You can build more of those feelings. You can build more of that commitment. You can talk more. You can communicate more. You can push each other more with your goals. You can build intimacy. You can literally set aside time in your calendar and say, hey, let's work on the relationship at least once or twice a week. Let's literally put it in our calendar and build this fucking thing. Let's be very fucking romantic. Now you have full control. Now you have full agency. Do you see the difference between that as in romance, focusing on romance, which again is an action versus soulmates and the one and all of that kind of stuff where there's no fucking action that you can take. It's just, oh, it magically happened and I hope it doesn't disappear. There's a reason why the divorce rate is so high in, you know, a lot of you are in America. Your divorce rate's like fucking 70% or something just like pff, insane insane. I would say it was high if it was 10%. 70% is insane. It's a similar in my country. It's a similar percentage in a lot of fucking Western countries. And I think it is because, or I think a big part of it is because people marry for, they say love, but they're marrying for magic. They're marrying because they're like, I have feelings and I don't know how this happened and I need to lock this person down or I just feel these magical feelings and so we should get married. And I'm not against marriage, but do it because it's one step in the process of you and her or you and him becoming stronger as a couple, becoming better, more fulfilled people. Do it to build your relationship. Don't do it just because it seemed like a good idea at the time. The reason why the divorce rate is so high is because people just get married on a fucking whim because they feel some emotions rather than because they have built something really amazing and marriage is the next logical step and they want to keep building. I know that what I'm saying maybe doesn't sound super sexy and super magical, but to me, it's way more glamorous than, you know, we're just together because fucking who knows, it just magically happened and we're each other's soulmate. I find it more magical, more appealing, more glamorous to think about the fact that I can build romance with someone. I find that fucking amazing. The fact that if I just spend more time with that person, there will be more romance. If I put aside time in my calendar, there will be more romance. If I listen to them more, there will be more romance. If I ask deeper questions, there will be more romance. There will be more intimacy. There will be more love. There will be more connection if I build it with them and if they build it with me. I find that fucking amazing. That feels like a cheat code to relationships. And it is. There's a reason I have done so much content on how to build a relationship. And my girlfriend Imogen has sat down with me. There is a full playlist we have with like 20 or 30 of these videos where we've just gone balls deep on how to build a very, very strong relationship. We have been together for five years at this point, And it feels like we've lived 20 or 30 years in terms of relationship terms. When I speak to other people who've, in, who've been in a relationship for longer than we have, because we've gone so fucking hardcore deep on trying to build the damn relationship. We've put aside so much time in our calendar, hours and hours a day, every single week, for every single fucking year that we have been together, we have spent so much time building. And the reason we have a strong connection is because we built it, not because it just magically happened, not because we're magically soulmates and we're the one and, oh my God, it's magical and it's beautiful. It's definitely fucking beautiful. You can say it's fucking magical, but we built it, we earned it. And that is a relationship, I can't predict the future, but that is the kind of relationship that lasts a hell of a lot longer, maybe for life, who fucking knows, I can't predict the future, but that is the kind of relationship that lasts a hell of a lot longer than one based on, you know, we're soulmates for each other. Because again, what happens when that fades? And it will. The idea of the soulmate or the idea of the one, that doesn't last for the rest of your life. Life gets in the way. You know, one of you gets cancer, one of you gets fat, one of you maybe is thinking about cheating on the other person. You have kids and now you have less time for each other. Maybe you get a really busy job and you just have less time for each other. You're stressed. Maybe you have a death of a parent. Maybe you have to look after one of your parents in their old age. Maybe they get Alzheimer's. Any of that kind of shit can happen. Life does get in the way. It's not just smooth sailing. And if you build a relationship or you build your life essentially on this idea of the soulmate and it all being magical and just perfect and wonderful and you know we're in we're the one for each other where she's my soulmate she's my honey bunny what the fuck are you going to do when life kicks you in the dick but if you build a romantic relationship based on taking action then when life does get in the way you just go oh okay well we don't feel super close with each other right now because you know you got fat or you know your parents died or this happened or whatever happened hey we need to double the action that we're taking 
Right now, we're already taking some action to build intimacy and this relationship and romance. Feels like we can step it up a little bit right now just because, you know, we're getting a bit disconnected. All right, let's just do double the amount. Like, let's literally do double the amount of romantic interactions that we have. Let's have sex twice as much as we are. Let's talk twice as much as we currently are. Let's set time aside in our calendar. If we don't have a lot of time, we'll just set a little bit aside and we will really make the most of that time. Let's double or increase our romantic actions and build this bloody thing. There have been so many times in my relationship with my girlfriend Imogen where, yeah, the romance, the feeling of like, you are the one has faded because life's gotten in the way especially during all the lockdowns and that all that bullshit during 2020. Yeah, we weren't particularly fucking romantic. We weren't particularly intimate. We weren't particularly close. I certainly wasn't feeling like you're my honey bunny. You're the, you're the one for me. You're my baby girl. No, fuck no. We weren't feeling any of that. And so what we did was we focused on the actions that we could take. We became more intimate. We put time into communicating. We literally put effort into building the relationship. When times are tough, the tough get going. When times are tough, work fucking twice as hard. Romance is something that you do. A soulmate or the one is something that you just hope for. That's not empowering. And so it's unbelievably empowering to think, man, I can just double my actions. I don't have to sit there and like hope that this, th this person always loves me or hope that they're always the one for me or hope that I chose correctly or hope that nothing changes. Hope is a fucking dream. You know what I mean? Taking action is the way that you get shit done. So I want to make it very clear. You can still be romantic. I am so unbelievably romantic with Imogen. You obviously don't see it on camera, but I'm a big romantic softy at heart. I absolutely am. And so is she. But I don't tell myself that she's the only person on the planet that I could ever be romantic with. That's called a lie. A lot of people wrap that up and say, you know, that just means that I, I love them so much and they're the one for me. It's like, no, you've told yourself a lie. And when times get tough, that lie or that hope or those magical feelings, they might not be there. Those magical feelings of she's the one or he's the one, they might not be there during tough times, but action will be there. If you take some action, you can always do that especially during the tough times, because you can go, like I said, man, times are tough right now. Let's double the fucking action. I did a very similar video to this or a very similar concept to this called love is not what you see in the movies. So go on my channel, just watch this video. Love is not what you see in the movies. And one of the quotes from this video was love is an action more so than a feeling. It starts with you. It is not an external thing. The idea of the soulmate is you putting all of this, putting all of your power on some external thing. You just have to hope that it works out. You have to hope that they're your honey bunny. You have to hope that they're the one for you. Hope doesn't get shit done. Action gets shit done. So go out there, take those actions. Don't just sit there and hope for the idea of the soulmate or the one. No, make that shit happen. And that even applies to before you find someone to be with. Take as much action as you possibly can. Talk to as many people as you possibly can. You're not just going to magically find the one or the soulmate. You're going to talk to a lot of people, meet a lot of people, try a lot of people, maybe have sex with some of them or date some of them. And then some of them will be a great candidate for a really strong, beautiful relationship that you can build. That is exactly what I have done with my girlfriend. All of the relationships that I have around me, you know, my clients, my family, my parents have been together for like 40 years or something. All of those relationships, when I ask them, how come you guys are still together? They say, because we built this, like we worked hard at this. And it doesn't have to be hard as in like painful, but like we put effort in, we put care in, we watered the garden that is our relationship every day. We made sure we tended to our garden. We tended to each other's needs. We tended to each other's wants and desires. We talked whenever we went through a hard time, that's when we actually came closer and did double the action. We didn't just sit there and say, how come my emotions are starting to fade? How come I don't feel as close to you as I used to? No, we said, holy shit, I don't feel as close to you as I, I used to. Fuck, I need to change something. Like we need to do something. Let's take some fucking action. So take those goddamn actions. Don't just sit there hoping for the one. If you would like some help with this, just like I helped this particular coaching client of mine, we have a beautiful coaching program called The Winner's Club, 12 weeks with myself and Cam and a couple of other guys in there that are coaching as well at this point in time, as well as all of the other members of the group. We love tackling concepts like this. We love getting you guys and girls to sort of expand that mind and open up and realize that a lot of the stuff that society and they haven't intended to do it, but a lot of the, the myths and stuff that society has told you is exactly that, a myth. 
It's, it's a beautiful, sweet little lie. And I don't know about all of you, but I would rather a bitter truth than a sweet lie. I have on my freaking wrist tattooed, speak truth. A little hard to see on camera, but speak truth. I would rather the truth, even if it's sort of a little bit bitter, even if it doesn't sound beautiful and magical, I would rather the truth than a sweet little fucking lie. I, I no, thank you. I'll take the truth every single time. If you'd like the truth, join the coaching program. We will absolutely kick your ass into gear. I will leave a link in the description below. Click that link. You'll apply for the program. I'll sit down on a call with you, make sure you're a good fit for the program, and we will go ahead full fucking steam, baby. Otherwise, go out there, as always, ladies and gentlemen, crush those goals and take some action. Love, romance, and all of that, it doesn't just happen. Or it, it happens a little bit at the start, but that doesn't last. And I don't know about all of you, but I'm here for long-lasting relationships, both friendships, sexual relationships, deep, intimate relationships, client relationships. I'm here for the long haul. I don't want any of that sweet little junk food, which is essentially what soulmate and the one is. I want that deeper, filling, home-cooked heart meal, which is taking action and focusing on building romance and focusing on building a beautiful relationship.